Hi, you guys. I'm Ariana. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. you. Awesome. Nice you. Sasha, we're both from Detroit and we both went to Michigan. Oh, I don't know if we oh go, go blue. Oh. Wait a minute. Oh, oh. oh. I almost you, wore a Detroit shirt too. My you don't God. understand how happy you this makes Sasha. Yeah. Like, yeah. You well, truly don't. Uh, I'm that person that when people wear like the M, I yell go blue. And generally like nine times out of 10, nobody says anything back. But one time I was on the receiving end and it was the best moment of my life. Best moment of my life. Oh, oh go blue. When did you um go there? What year? Oh, you really want to know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll take my first 2005 to 2009. Oh, we were there at the same time. Oh, wait a minute. We I was in South other. Quad. Yeah, we know each other. Wait, I know Langston? Sorry. I did. Oh my you gosh, did? I did. Oh my God, yeah, I know Langston too. Oh, wait a minute, were we friends? I don't so remember funny. you, but that's so <laughs> That's what most people say. Oh. Um, so that's fair, that's fair, that is fair. No one really uh, Yes. Hi everyone in Hi. the <laughs> reunion of the exact same time. No, this is just us right now. Yeah. Um, but we're on season two. That's so crazy. Yeah. How did you guys see the evolution of your characters? How did you feel about it? Because we have kind of a like a miniature time jump. Like time is passing at this point. Sam is two years sober. A year and a half, I think, right? Am I Anyone else want to pop in on that? I think it's. I don't know the exact. I don't know. I think it's. I think it is that. two years. Two I think years? it's like okay. a two and a half I'm years, because she was a no. year sober at the she end. She was a yes, and then yeah. it's six and months. Then it was, we pick six up months. six months. Yeah, so we pick up yeah. like a year, year and, and a half. half. Year and a half sober. Sorry. I think. Yes. Sorry so, what did you guys think of the evolution of your characters? Well, I, you know, Felicia ends up with Dr. Pete, who we meet up with at the end of the wedding. Uh, that was like a fun little surprise. Ben Thompson, who plays Pete, was just such a gem and was just so down for anything. And, you know, uh, developing that serious relationship for her at the top for Felicia, I think is really important to kind of set the scene of her being more vulnerable and her starting to think more in depth about the rest of her life. And her letting someone in past this kind of level of oh I'm just a single mom and I'm just having fun with everyone I have fun with and um so I think it, yeah it creates uh, an opportunity for her to be a little bit more real and vulnerable mm. I, yeah. I, I honestly I paused at the beginning because I was like Brick gets divorced and I did not expect it right off the bat <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, we're going right in. But when you think about it, you know, that's the most interesting part to see is, is like, okay, you did the thing, you got married. Okay. You really didn't want that. So uh, you cut it off and then what happens from, from there, right? It's uh, yeah, she gets divorced. She, um, and she pretends that everything is okay, which I think was a really fun thing to play this season. Um, all the ways that she could just squash down emotion were expressed in this season uh, through the way that she acts around her friends, uh, the, through the way that she acts around um, Joel, played by the amazing Charlie Hall, the way she acts around her parents by not telling them. Um, and she does some pretty, you know, out of character things for herself, such as like stealing and you know uh just really tries to figure out what it is that's going to make her feel like she's in control and that was sort of the fun you know fun stuff to play with this season and uh yeah james isn't doing too yeah. well right now <laughs> yeah you yeah. know um, yeah. and and james is just lost man he just doesn't know <laughs> where he's at he doesn't he doesn't know what sobriety really means to him he never really figured that out um, although he was putting on this brave face for everyone. And so now that that brave face is gone, having relapsed in the first season, he's just trying to figure out what that actually, what sobriety actually looks like for him. Um, because for whatever reason, AA is not getting through to him, um, because he had this set structure and set of rules that, obviously led him to where he's at right now so now that those rules are gone he's just trying to figure out what new rules would look like or um try to figure out how to go with the flow rather than being so rigid all of the time because the rigidity is very prone to cracking and we saw that in the first season 
Yes. It's interesting to see that Felicia is the most mature person. Yes. <laughs> Can you believe? <laughs> truly. I know. I truly, know. The business owner. <laughs> and, 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 and it feels kind of... It feels so, so like disrespectful that we I didn't know. even look at that. It's just like she owns a, a full business, a full and she business. owns her home. She owns yeah. her she home. owns a condo. Yeah, yeah. you know, and yeah. she got a kid. Like, she yeah, really I love that very stuff. mature. Because yeah. yeah, I think everyone is super surprised when they watch the pilot, and then by the end of season two, you're like, oh wow, <laughs> this is not the person I expected. Yeah. Which is exactly what we wanted. You know, we we mm-hmm. wanted people to judge her and and kind of show this past that she had been judged on being a teen mom being a partier and all of that and you know she is also trying to constantly prove that and maybe overcompensate that she's not that anymore yes Mm. and you guys all are kind of entangled with sam in so many ways and but it's a bit difficult because as she says her sobriety is number one which is important But it's also in the same breath a bit narcissistic because other people have things going on. What, how would you describe kind of your character's relationship with Sam and how it evolves that it's not always going to be about her and her sobriety that you guys are important people as well? Mm. Well, I think there, I think, is it episode three? I know there's a scene with, with Samantha and Felicia where Sam's kind of coming in, she's spouting off all the things that she's overthinking about the her and Alex relationship. And there's a moment where Felicia's like, I don't know, just figure it out. No one, no one wants to do that. You know, no, no one, no one wants to do anything. And so I think there's a certain, certain level of like, all right, you're on your own, Sammy. Like I'm here, but, uh, you know, fly free little bird this year. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I mean, she, she ends up on, on, Britt's couch after mm-hmm. uh, a bit of a tuffle with, uh, or tussle, excuse me, with her living situation with her mother. But at the same time, it's like, okay, you could stay here, but, <laughs> yeah. but you know, what are you going to be doing today? Cause I'm going to go to work and get my life together and, <laughs> you know, go through separation and whatnot. And I think that's for all of us, not to say that like, you know, let your sober friends kind of hang out to dry, but it is like, at some point you have to regain that control over your life. And I think that like actually fighting for sobriety is just so like it's in not in the lightest way. It is a very self-centered endeavor. You really do have to focus on who you are and how what your relationship is with uh, substance abuse. And so with that, you then tend to forget what's going on in other people's lives. You forget that once you leave their site their life keeps on going Mm. and you kind of forget to account for that um and you know she tends to do that all the time and although this she is the lead of the show and so she's going to you know you're going to focus the most on her in real life uh you you kind of just aren't the main character and you have to take a lot of people's um thoughts and feelings and, and and their lives into account yeah it definitely kind of flips the trope of main character energy and it's just like but no (laughs) other people exist and it's not always about you and what is actually friendship and sobriety what's also I thought was really interesting about the show and I feel like I looked at it in a different way than I've ever before was like the concept of a higher power that it Mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have to be tied to a religion or anything traditional but in order to function in life people need to let go of some things and give it to someone else um not to get too personal but what kind of are your kind of power powers or what keeps you grounded and being able to pursue like this very creative endeavor Mm. journaling and therapy oof (laughs) music and nature for me (laughs) music and nature those are my higher powers for sure yeah um god i i think it's just weirdly relationships although i'm like i know i know (laughs) that's it's gonna sound like crazy but like there's the 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 i feel like human connection you mean human human, yeah i'm about to say like like for all types of relationships yes all i'm sorry all types of relationships i think that you (laughs) as a person are just an amalgamation of all of the people and experiences that you've had and Mm. so focusing on that 
and and giving a lot of like credit to the people around you is is very very important mm. and um this is a new higher power because i have been very i mean in the worst sense self-centered uh but mm. now uh um just coming out of that through therapy yeah relationships for sure therapy man it's going therapy to really does. <laughs> it hits it hits as a, you know as a first generation kid who was not taught about therapy i tell you oh, oh my whoo, goodness listen if relief. you if you are a first generation kid i'm i'm talking to you specifically yeah. go to therapy yeah. go to therapy go to therapy. Go, go to therapy right now you might not you might have the best life and think that you're you're doing well i promise you you're going to find some stuff out about yourself and you need yeah. therapy yeah. I think that that's, um, yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure, yeah. for sure. And your your family's not going to teach you And there's about it. easier access these days through things like, uh, why am I promoting? But like, better help. <laughs> Listen, better help. I, better help. Great. I, I hit yeah. that site when, when pandemic was, uh, you yeah. know, strong and not shy to mention it. It's a great site. They do a sliding scale as well. And uh, you can find people to talk to if you're really, you know, look. Yeah. yeah. And as Lily was saying, that just self-soothing things like singing, I do remember you from the Glee Project and oh, really yes. bringing yourself out there. Same. But we have a cute, very miniature breakfast club reunion. What would you say, which out of those five is the like high school archetype that you resonate with most? Ooh, mm. you mean as a human being or as a character for Lily? Uh, you as you. As a human being, I probably, you know, I I'm surprised I'm saying this, but I, I think in retrospect, it, it is Molly Ringwald's character. I, I did a lot of musical theater. I did, um, mm. I was kind of going down the opera track. So even though I was like secretly like Judd Nielsen's character, like, and, you know, like a little bit alternative, it was like, always kind of behind the scenes I was always kind of trying to paint this picture of this you know perfect little choir girl mm. uh so I think for me it would probably be Molly's character but there's like a secret Judd in there for sure <laughs> I'm like a blend of is it Emilio Estevez like the jock who's the jo I'm a blend I was a blend of the jock and um and Ali Sheedy's character like you know, go to school, be the cheerleader, you know, whatnot. And then uh, go to Warp Tour on the weekends and Demp, Detroit Electronic Music Festival. What? <laughs> <laughs> really putting uh, myself out there right now. <laughs> yeah, no, not not at all. Not at all. Because I am the exact, <laughs> the exact same two people. Um, and the more I think about it, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I like ran track and all of that but I didn't like you know play any traditional sports with a, a ball or whatever so I was like nobody cared that I ran I was good at like running track or anything so I was just kind of by myself for a good amount of the the high school journey just kind of like quiet in the corner I feel like if anybody from high school um found out that I was on this show, they'd be like, I didn't even know I went to high school with that dude at <laughs> <Yeah>. all. <laughs> like, uh, I, th I think I heard him say a couple jokes in the back of the bus, but he would then, you know, retreat back into the seat and yep. kind of just <laughs> be like really quiet for the rest of the bus ride home. So, yeah, that was me. Awesome. Well, congrats on season two and all the future things. I'll connect with you all on social media because I guess I semi yes. know all of you. But thank you so much, <laughs> and you guys have a great day. You thank too. You. Go blue. Thank you. <laughs>